So, the last speaker is Apacheka. Um, he will talk about uh, computational quarter secret uh, sharing, please. Hi, everyone. I will be talking about computational quantum secret sharing. Uh, my name is Alfred, and this is joint work with people who are else, and Liu Zeng and Charlie Barrio. So let's start by defining our problem. Um, we have a dealer holding a secret quantum state, and uh, we have M parties. We also have an access structure, a function from a subset of um, N parties to zero and one, defining the authorization status for all subsets of parties. And we will be sharing a secret quantum state uh, such that each party will get some quantum share of some size. And if a subset of parties is authorized according to F, then shares of P, um, this authorized subset, can be used to reconstruct the secret state psi. And if P is not authorized, their joint shares should reveal um, no... Uh, if a subset of parties is not authorized, if a sub, um, and <laughs> uh, hello, okay. And if a subset P of parties is not authorized, then their joint shares should reveal no information about the secret state psi. So we have a couple of remarks about this um, definition. First of all, the function um, f must be a monotone function because if the shares of uh, some subset p can reconstruct psi, then so can the shares of any containing subset p prime. Um, the second one, f must be a so-called no cloning function. This is specific to um, quantum secret sharing as opposed to classical secret sharing. Um, we require that if a subset P is authorized, then the complement of P cannot be authorized because otherwise we could just um, share a state and then run the reconstruction procedure on both P and its complement to clone an arbitrary quantum state. Finally, uh, the secret sharing scheme is also a quantum erasure correcting code because if a subset is authorized, then we can reconstruct the secret state from only the shares of that subset, meaning that we can correct erasures on the complement. Okay. So why do we care about this problem? First of all, it's a fundamental primitive in cryptography. Uh, so it's interesting on its own right. Also, it has a lot of applications like secure storage of quantum information, multi-party computation on quantum data, and so on. Right. So let's uh, move on to our formal definitions. So first we define quantum erasure correcting codes for functions. Um, first of all, we define a QCC for a subset P uh, as a couple of um, quantum channels such that if we encode a state, then apply a arbitrary quantum channel that is that acts as identity on the subset P, and then we apply the decoding procedure, we should get the first original state back then we call this a quantum erasure correcting code for the subset P. And if you have a monotone function F such that um, this code is a erasure correcting code for all P such that FP equals one, we call this a erasure correcting code for F. Similarly, we can define quantum secret sharing. We define it to be a tuple of quantum channels such that um, we require these two conditions, correctness and perfect privacy. Correctness just means that we can um, reconstruct for authorized subsets. So we require that the scheme is also a um, QCC for F. And the difference from QCCs is that we also require perfect privacy, uh, meaning that if a subset of parties is not authorized according to F, then for any pair of quantum states, the reduced density matrix of any um, unauthorized subset of parties should be the same, meaning that the unauthorized shares are independent of the secret being shared. Um, okay, so we have another remark. So if a subset P is authorized, then by correctness and some strong form of um, the no cloning theorem, we have that perfect privacy is automatically satisfied for the complement of P, but this does not reduce the problem to um, Q 
QCC directly because there can still be um, supersets of the complement of P that should be unauthorized, but you don't get anything related to them from this uh, lemma. So let's also talk about, talk about the state of the art. So we have that for any allowable excess structure F, meaning that it is both monotone and no cloning. We can construct a QSS scheme realizing it, uh, but its share size will correspond to the smallest monotone spam program computing F. So if you're not familiar with uh, monotone spam programs, it's a algebraic model of computation. And you won't have time to go into it, but it's um, weaker than the circuit model and the Turing model of computation. So we do have that um, for the simple case of threshold access structures, where a subset of parties is authorized if and only if uh, its size exceeds some tr threshold. We can indeed construct QSS schemes realizing such functions with polynomial share size. Um, however, as I said, monotone spam programs are weaker than um, the usual models of computation, classical computation. And there are functions that are in class P, that are polytime, but they require monotone spam programs of size exponential, which means that the, with the current known techniques, the QSS schemes we get for them are also exponential size. And this is in contrast to the classical case of secret sharing, where based on um, computational hardness assumptions, we can realize secret sharing schemes for any excess structures that is polytime computable. So the question we're asking is, if we are also willing to make some quantum computational hardness assumptions, can we also construct polynomial size QSS schemes for a larger class of excess structures or maybe even for all of class P? And we show through a simple compiler that we construct that the answer is yes. Um, we show that if f is a heavy monotone function uh, in class P, then we can construct a polynomial size QSS scheme realizing f. I will define what a heavy function is later. And further, if f is a T heavy monotone function in class P, then we can construct a um, QSS scheme realizing it with uh, information ratio 32 over 2t minus n, meaning that the shares of individual parties will be um, smaller than even the secret state itself. And we will talk about this later, but this is uh, probably impossible with perfectly secure QSS schemes. And finally, given uh, at most n minus 2t plus 1 shares of the, sorry, copies of the secret state, we can construct a polynomial size QSS scheme for any function f that is in class P, which matches the um, classical case. Right, before um, starting our construction, let's talk about our definition. So um, computational privacy for quantum uh, secret sharing schemes is defined similarly to the perfect privacy, except that we only require privacy against um, bound, time-bounded polynomial size uh, quantum adversaries. We require that for an unauthorized subset, for any pair of secrets, for any um, quantum polytime adversary, the distinguishing advantage of the adversary will be at most uh, negligibly small in the number of parties n. Right, um, in our compiler, we will be using the quantum one-time pad encryption scheme uh, which is constructed as follows. When we uh, want to um, encrypt the quantum state, we sample a classical key that's twice the size of the quantum state, and we use it to randomly apply poly X and Z, Z gates to each qubit of the message. And when we know the key, we can just decrypt by applying the immerse gates to each qubit. And we know that for a randomly sampled key, this scheme perfectly hides the message, meaning that the um, resulting mixed state will be the same regardless of the input state. Right, now we move on to our compiler. So we will be constructing a QSS scheme for a function f that is um, monotone and no cloning. But we also um, use another function f prime that is, that can be any monotone no cloning function such that it's weaker than F in the sense that if a subset P is authorized with respect to 
um, f, it should be also authorized with respect to f prime. And we will use two building blocks. We will use a quantum erasure correcting code for f prime, and we will use a um, quantum secure computationally secure classical secret sh sharing scheme for the function f. So we will use quantum erasure correcting code to distribute the state and to satisfy correctness, while we, we, we will use the classical scheme to ensure privacy. Right. So to share a quantum state row, we first sample a one-time path key k. Then we encrypt our uh, secret using this key. Then we um, encode our encrypted state with the quantum erasure correcting code. We also classically share the classical key of the quantum on-time path scheme, and the share of party i will be the ith share from both the classical secret sharing scheme and the quantum erasure correcting code. And the reconstruction is, in the, is done the natural way. We first reconstruct the encrypted quantum state using the erasure correcting code. Then we also reconstruct the classical one-time path key then, finally, using the decryption procedure of the one-time path scheme, we um, obtain the um, secrets. Right. And we follow this, we show this theorem that uh, says that when QC and SS are as we described, then QSS is a valid computationally secure quantum secret sharing scheme for F, and its total share size is going to be bounded by the share sizes of the erasure correcting code and the classical secret sharing scheme. And since we're just invoking the um, erasure correcting code and the classical scheme in a black box way, whenever they're efficient, our QSS scheme is also efficient in terms of its time complexity. So now we move on to our results. So we define a heavy function to be a function such that it's a, um, any, any subset that is authorized has size at least n over two. So this is like a uh, natural subclass of all no cloning functions. And we show that these, this uh, natural subset of all monotone function, sorry, all no cloning functions is not easy. Actually, it's still hard in the sense that there are heavy monotone functions that are um, polytime computable using a classical computer but they require monotone span programs of exponential size, which means that using the existing um, QSS construction techniques, we can only construct exponential size uh, schemes for some heavy functions. However, uh, through our compiler, we show that for any heavy monotone function in the class P, we can construct a polysized computational secure quantum secret sharing scheme realizing F based on standard computational hardness assumptions. And we do this, uh, we obtain this simply by invoking our compiler with the classical efficient secret sharing scheme for F and the uh, um, quantum erasure correcting code for the threshold function. Right, another one of our results was sharing um, sufficiently large secrets into shares that are even smaller than the secret itself. And to do this, we slightly modify our um, compiler. Since we are allowed now, since now we are allowed to use computational assumptions, we don't actually need to um, sample a truly random seed for the one-time path scheme. We first sample a um, short seed, then we use a pseudo-random generator function that is post-quantum secure to expand the seed to the appropriate size for the quantum one-time path encryption scheme. Then the rest of the construction is the same as before. We encrypt our state using quantum one-time pad and we share both the encrypted state and the quantum one-time pad seed now instead of the actual key. And since we are um, sharing this seed, it's gonna be actually smaller than the shares of the actual key. So, Again, using this compiler, we show that for any T-heavy monotone function that is in uh, class P, we can construct a classical, sorry, a computational QSS scheme realizing it with information ratio that is at most uh, 32 over 2T minus N, meaning 
as I said, uh, that the shares of individual parties will be growing sublinearly with the size of the um, secret itself. So this is actually impossible with perfectly private schemes as shown by this result of Gottsman. In a perfectly private scheme, the size of each share must be at least as large as the size of the secret itself. Right. To summarize, we have shown a um, we have shown polynomial size cases schemes for a large class of functions called heavy functions, for which the previous techniques necessarily require exponential size QSS schemes. We showed that for large enough secrets, we can construct um, schemes where the shares of each individual party will be smaller than even the secret itself. Again, this is impossible with perfect privacy. And finally, given sufficiently many copies of the secret, we can um, construct polynomial size QSS schemes for any function in class P, which matches the classical results. And one open question is, can we construct polynomial size QSS schemes for any no cloning monotone function that is in class P, given only a single copy of the secret? Okay, thank you, Apple. So, questions? Okay, so um, let's thank uh, Apple and uh, all the speakers of this session. <laughs>